Let's see, we got the bolt carrier, Centurion, LMT. All right, ready? Let's go. Hey fellas, welcome to another episode of The Woe Show, brought to you by fine art collectors who buy awesome prints from weaponoutfitters.com. Printed using the G-Clay, that's French, the G-Clay process. These archival grade prints use archival grade ink, archival grade paper. If you frame this up, this will become a family heirloom. I mean, come on, imagine. Imagine your grandkids getting that from grandpa and be like, man, grandpa had such fine taste with these fine art prints of R-rated, G-rated capability. We also have uh, the Woe After Dark t-shirt. Uh, this is new for 2025. It's made using the Near Automata theme uh, design for the logo. And on the back, we have Nier Automata cosplay featuring model Emma Cyrus. All right, today we are talking about AR-15 bolts. So AR-15s were designed way in the 50s. So that's like 66 years ago. Imagine a car from the 50s versus a car from today. Our steel, our plastics, much less electronics are way different than in the 50s. The AR-15 bolt was also designed for a 20 inch rifle barrel with a rifle length gas system, which has much less pressure at the chamber during unlocking and critical phases of operation. Obviously, 20-inch rifle barrels aren't in vogue these days. These days, everyone likes nice and short, compact barrels. They like suppressors. They like high-pressure ammunition. Oh, oh yeah, the, the AR-15 was also originally designed around spherical, clean-burning gunpowder. To this day, we're still using gunpowder the AR-15 was not designed for. I reload a ton of ammunition, and I mostly use ball powder. A ramshot tack, and, oh, and I forgot the name of the, the new new powder I've been using. But Ramshot Tech is a ball powder that's high pressure, high velocity, and yeah, the AR-15 wasn't originally designed for that. <laughs> so you're getting a lot of stresses on the bolt that the 1959 design and material specification really wasn't called out for. So AR-15 bolts break. When and where do they break? They typically break at the bolt lugs because of the timing of using a shorter gas system on shorter barrels you're putting a lot more pressure on the rear of the bolt lug unlocking the chamber when it's still under a lot of pressure and just messing with the, the original design and operating out of the original design specs this also stresses the bolt itself at the cam pin hole so typically you have lug shearing and the bolt breaking in half you usually have one or two lugs breaking at a time and sometimes you can catch it beforehand with cracks really cleaning your AR-15 well and looking and making sure there are aren't cracks forming, that's a good idea. The worst case scenario for a uh, AR-15 bolt would be a short barrel, short gas system, big gas port, suppressor, and uh, high pressure ammunition. As it so happens, Crane Naval Special Warfare Center tested that exact scenario and found with multiple Mark 18s being put through the ringer that the bolt breaks on average at around 10,000 rounds. So that's the worst case scenario. What about a more typical scenario, like a 14.5 mid-length gas? system. Unfortunately, we don't have any military testing data for that, but we do have a ton of anecdotal data because it's the most popular configuration in America. Some people actually shoot their guns, which is crazy, right? <laughs> most people don't shoot their guns enough, and if they do, they don't document the, the round counts well enough. I definitely shoot a lot, but I'm spreading out my 10, 20,000 rounds over multiple guns through the year. So my data is all over the place and not very useful. Thankfully, we have people like Pat Rogers back in the day who was testing out the Filthy 14 BCM 14.5 mid-length. He wanted to see how far he could push that gun without cleaning it. He also found that uh, he was originally testing how far he could push uh, the gun without cleaning it, but he also found that he had his first bolt breakage at 16,000 rounds or so. It was just two bolt lugs shearing off. I would say 15,000 rounds is pretty typical. Plus or minus 2,000 rounds as standard deviation. 95% is between 17 and 13,000 rounds, I would say. My guess, my, my educated guess, or wild ass guess, whatever you want to say. But yeah, I'd say 20,000 rounds, you're really pushing your luck on a carbine. 10,000 rounds is the absolute baseline of worst case scenario. 
Anyways, we have these aftermarket bolts from LMT and Centurion Arms, and they just give you an updated, upgraded design that gives you a lot more use capacity. So you can shoot it longer before you have to swap it out. Uh, the LMT bolt in particular is very expensive. It's $381 versus $90 to $120 for a standard mil spec bolt. The reason it's so expensive is because it uses a super steel that LMT has never disclosed. However, uh, if you Google it and search online, people have made very educated, smart guesses as to what the super steel that LMT is using. The, they are probably correct. The super steel is what they use on the F-18's landing gear. to be able to resist insane amounts of force and shock. Material science nerds who've looked into it agree that it is, it's a steel alloy that's overkill for AR-15 bolt use. So that's part of the reason why it's so expensive. It's also hard chrome and uh, they also revised the design slightly. They changed the lugs to add stress relief features. They radius the rear of the lugs so it's no longer a stress collection point. The extractor is upgraded. Now it has two extractor springs to make sure that the claw never loses tension and uh, has a hard chrome finish for durability, easy to clean, and just real nice. <laughs> the older versions about a decade ago had nickel boron finishes. As everyone now knows, uh, hard chrome beats nickel boron easily. Uh, the Centurion Arms V2 bolt is also standard AR-15 compatible upgraded bolt. What they did, uh, releasing this in 2024, is that they radius the rear of the lugs as well to make sure that you had no uh, stress collection points, minimize lug shearing. They upgraded the ejector, so it uses a standard extractor, but it uses a dual ejector design. The reason why we have a dual ejector system is because of how short-barreled rifles with suppressors are super common now. Dual ejectors ensure positive ejection, so you have more reliability with overgassed violent systems. Pretty handy to have. Obviously, it's chrome finished, just like the LMT. So these are a lot more cost-effective. Uh, they cost about the same as premium mil-spec bolts. Also available from Centurion Arms and LMT are their bolt carriers. Centurion Arms sand cutter bolt carrier has sand cutter features, so the bearing surfaces have cuts in them, which allows for carbon, sand, whatever gunk to fall away, basically. It gives space cavity and space for gunk to go away, so the carrier skates on less material. LMT version of the enhanced bolt also has voids on their rails so that uh, you have less material contacting the inside of the upper receiver. They've revised the cam path slightly so you have more time for backwards movement of the bolt carrier before the cam starts forcing the bolt to unlock. Uh, it vents slightly differently and Carl Lewis, proprietor of Lewis Machine and Tool, talked about how he changed the internal direction of the gas. So it spreads the gas around a bit more so the atomized copper from uh, propellant gases don't all deposit in the same spot and cause friction to increase. All right, so yeah, the use case for these these upgraded bolts, these upgraded bolt carriers is uh, you want this on your grail gun. You want it on your personal gun that you're going to be carrying through the zombie apocalypse when all the supply chains are done and you can't just uh, pop into your local gun store to get a new bolt carrier group, a new bolt or something like that. Just having that extra capacity, uh, it's kind of like having a bigger gas tank. Is a bigger gas tank more useful to you? I mean, depends on your use case, right? Uh, you can use a standard bolt, sure, but uh, for my personal guns, I prefer to have something significantly upgraded like with uh, the LMT bolt, which uses a crazy steel. So it's up to you, up to your personal budget, your personal use case. If you're shooting a ton every year, you can afford the fancy stuff. If you are barely shooting your gun anyways, buy more ammo, buy more ammo, get more training. If you want the best stuff for 
your personal gun, for your grail gun. Uh, we have these bolts, man. We have them at weaponoutfitters.com. We've got the bolts, the bolt carriers, barrels, whatever you need. Slings, prints, art, t-shirts, come on. Weaponoutfitters.com, that's where you wanna go. Thank you very much for your time. Stay tuned for uh, another episode of Wo The Woe Show. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to talk about in particular. Bye-bye. Let's go!